Today, we're going to talk about the basics of resume writing. Many students are submitting their resume for review, and I wanted to take some time to go over some of the basics of resume writing. As you can see on my screen, there is a one-page resume that looks nice, clean, clear, and easy to read. That is one of the first things about resume writing. I want you to note that this document is something that will stay and grow with you throughout your college career and then after graduation. It is a live document that, that is always growing and moving. So ultimately, for undergrad, your resume should be one page. Sometimes I will see a two-page resume, and that is okay if the student or the applicant has a lot of experience. If it's going to two pages or even three pages, that is unacceptable typically. Um, the two pages I see is just because the formatting and the spacing is off. Three is never acceptable for college students. So if it is two, it's usually a spacing issue. And one of the ways to rectify that is to highlight your resume, go into the paragraph function on your toolbar, spacing, single space, and make sure it's zero points. That is one of the key takeaways on fitting it to one page. I don't want many students to be using the um, uh, resume templates. I know it's suggested a lot in high school, they're easy to use, but this is a blank Microsoft Word document. And when you use a resume template, it really is difficult to edit and to add information to make this document stay and grow with you. It gets a little frustrating to work within text boxes. The format should always be balanced and easy to read. So you want your alignment to be consistent. On this one, the dates are on the right. I don't care if they're on the right or the left, just make sure you are consistent throughout the entire document. Font size. The typical font size is size 11 for a standard resume. If you do have a lot of experience and you're on the cusp of going to two pages, sometimes a student might use 10 points. If you are new to writing a resume and you don't have a lot to add to your document, you might use size 12 points. Once again, it will change and grow as you and your experience move on. Personal pronouns. Do not use the words like I, me, we on a resume. Uh, we'll go on in a different video and explain how to write bullet points. But on uh, this, this video, I just want you to know that personal pronouns are never used on a resume. Be consistent with your punctuation. Resume bullets are not true sentences. So I never recommend a period at the end of those bullets because they're not sentences. So leave off periods from all of your bullets. Verb tense. You want to make sure that you're either using present tense verbs for jobs that are currently happening or past tense jobs for jobs that ended. Do not use the ending ing on a, on a, um, on a verb. So it's either process or processed, not processing. Okay, so no ing endings. A key thing is most resumes will be rejected if you have any spelling or grammatical errors. You have to understand that employers are going to look at this and assess you on your skills and your abilities. If there is one spelling mistake, they're going to probably think that student or applicant does not pay strong attention to detail. So make sure that you do a spell check every single time and have another set of fresh eyes look at your document before you submit it for review um, because that's certainly most helpful. References. You never want to list the names, the emails, and the phone numbers of your references. References are something that will be asked for on an application or in person when you get to the end of the uh, application and interview process. You never want to put a reference on a resume because you don't want the uh, potential employer to call that reference before they even call you for the interview. So leave that off. Keep it on a separate document that you can submit to the employer when they ask for it. Summary statements. On some resumes, you might see a summary. They are a little bit more for um, students that have a lot of stuff to piece together, somebody that has some solid work experience. Um, the average college student probably won't have a summary statement. I tend to see that when you are working for two to three years post-graduation. An example of a summary statement at the top of your resume should probably be about you know three to five sentences. So an example of one might say, recent college graduate, with two years of internship experience in accounting, developed excellent analytical skills and consistently met tight deadlines, works well in a team, in, a team environment and in a fast-paced environment, 
past part one of the New York State CPA exam. So that is an example of a summary, but something that is on more advanced resumes. Your contact information. Now let's start from the top to the bottom. Your contact information is your name, and that is typically in a larger font, and it's bolded, as you can see from my example. So on this resume, you will start with your first name and your last name, and you're going to bold that and probably put it in size like maybe 16 to 18. You're going to put your city and your state and your zip code. I don't need to see any more the exact address of where you live. I see the trend moving away from that. You're going to add an appropriate phone number with a working voicemail that is appropriate and an appropriate email. So if your personal email is not something that is appropriate, you probably wanna switch it and maybe use your Queens College email or um, get a new one that just is very simple and, um, and uh, sounds good on your resume. This is where you'll also add your LinkedIn uh, profile. You can hyperlink it there as well. But please note that your name, your city, your state, your email, your zip code, your phone number, and your LinkedIn uh, profile should be up there. Education. All right. As you can see from the example, the proper way to list our school is Queens College of the City, University of New York. It's not Queens College, comma, Flushing, New York. It's simply how you see it, and it's in bold on the resume. For your month and year of graduation, I specifically just want to see the expected month and year of graduation. I do not want to see the dates of enrollment from 2020 to 2024. Just put your month and your year. The next line, you'll see Bachelor of Science degree in psychology. Please make sure, are you getting your Bachelor of Science or your Bachelor of Arts degree in what major? And put your minor if you have one. If you are not sure about a BA or a BS, you can look on your department's academic webpage and figure that out from there. Grade point averages, otherwise known as GPA. If you have over a 3.0, you should put it on there. If it's under a three, you typically leave it off. If you made the dean's list, you could put the years or the semesters that you made the dean's list. Now let's look at the experience section. You can see this person has experience campus leadership experience and course projects listed on their resume. When it comes to experience, you wanna make sure that your experience is listed in reverse chronological order. What that means is the most current job that you are working in goes on top and it goes down to the oldest job you've ever had. You wanna look at all the paid, unpaid, full-time, part-time, volunteer, and or practical experiences that you've had. Sometimes it might be a course project, um, as you can see from this resume example. You wanna make sure that you put the name of the employer, the city and the state, and the years, the months and the years that you worked there. So you can see we have Big Brothers and Sisters Club. Underneath it, you have founding member and public relations manager. All right. So the bullets are nice, neat, and clean because we use the bullet function on the top toolbar to make that happen. But do not list your supervisor's name, your salary, or your job type on this section. Please write in resume bullets, not in a paragraph format. It's very easy for the reader to scan through bullets. It's a little bit more challenging to read a paragraph. When possible, you want to be very specific. So under the Big Brothers and Sisters Club, you can see here they collaborated with 50 fellow students, university administrators, and fraternity staff to establish a chapter on campus. So we have the number 50 in there because it shows how many people were involved. From there, you can see past tense verbs consistently. The next experience, the psychology club being a treasurer of that. You can see it's present tense verbs because on the right-hand side, they're presently doing this. But to be specific with numbers and percentages, you can see the first bullet. Oversee all financial aspects of Campus Club. Manage a budget of $10,000. So when you can, you want to make sure you can quantify and put some numbers in there. So when you're at work or you're reflecting back on your experience, think about how much money you interacted and, and went through your hands and how many people you maybe managed, supervised, or worked with, because that's uh, always going to make it look a little bit more impressive. 
some students might have a, um, a course project that they would like to talk about, which is certainly fine. You want to make sure that you have a section called course project, which makes it easy for the reader to understand what we're talking about on the resume. We'll list the name of the course, Queens College Social Psychology course number 800. We'll reference the semester we worked. And then here you can see once again, the first bullet should always be like an overview of the project and what you did. So the first bullet, examined potential relationship between teenager anxiety and social media usage. I got it, I understand what's going on. To use some numbers, evaluated 20, 14 to 16 year old participants, media usage through detailed assessment. So that's where whenever you can use numbers and be specific with the ages of who the individuals you worked with are, that will always be um, giving the reader a lot of insight into what that role was all about. Underneath your skills section, any languages that you are conversational or fluent in, you can write it there. Do not put fluent in English. That should be a given. Um, you know, so it's any English language, uh, any language outside of English that you would reference in this skill section. Your computer skills. Do you know Microsoft Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint? What social media? Facebook, Twitter, and then some other tech skills, Google Docs and Photoshop. My biggest piece of advice is to really read a job description and read the requirements. If an employer is asking for specific things, please make sure if you have them, you go edit your skill section and you write it on there. The clue to being successful in writing your resume is to kind of draft one, um, one general resume up, and then you wanna really start to read the job descriptions and internship postings that pique your interest. It is never hard to understand uh, what the employer is looking for. I always say that the job description are like giving you the answers to a test. So the employer is telling you in a job description what the bullets and responsibilities are. They are also going to tell you what skills are required. So as an applicant, if you want to be successful, you also need to be very understanding that somebody on the other end will be reading your document and saying, do they have the skills and the qualities that they can transfer into this role? So ultimately, please make sure that you go through all of your experiences and you think about anything you've done in school, outside of school, that can make you marketable. Ultimately, a recruiter will scan for, um, I don't know, like 15 to 20 seconds, um, your, your basic resume. So by looking at this overview, you can see it's nice, neat, clean, organized, and easy to read. In the end, please revise your resume, resubmit it, and we will make sure that if there's anything that needs to be addressed, we'll get that information to you.